1985, oceanographer and Naval Reserve Commanding Officer Robert Ballard stunned the world when he found the Titanic. The real story, though, behind that mission remained a highly classified U.S. government Cold War secret for decades. The good news for all of us this morning, it is a secret no more. So joining us to tell the whole story is Robert Ballard. It's great to have you here. It's nice to be here. This is fascinating. So the headlines are great at the time. We find the Titanic. This is amazing. That was all those sort of a ruse. I mean, you wanted to search for the Titanic, but you, you couldn't get funding. And so you go to the Navy and you say, hey, let's find the Titanic. And they say, we have a better idea. They wanted you to find two nuclear subs from the 60s. Well, actually, we knew where the subs were. What they wanted me to do was to go back and not have the Russians follow me because we were interested in the nuclear weapons that were on the Scorpion and also what was the nuclear reactors doing to the environment. So they did not want the world to know that, and so I had to have a cover story. And so did this, this threw them off because, eh, it's great, the Titanic, yeah. but that's not really what we wanted. Well, and I had press aboard that yeah. were totally oblivious to what I was doing at the time. I had all sorts of other people on the ship that were not in the room when I was down at the Scorpion. Which is amazing. So you found the Scorpion, you find the submarines, and then you only have 12 days left to find the Titanic. Yes, I had embedded in my team naval intelligence officers and one who had reported directly to my boss, Admiral Ron Thunman, Vice Admiral Ron Thunman, who said, do my job first, and then this officer next to you will say when you're done. And uh, when I, he said I was done, I had very little time left. But I'd learned a lot from mapping the Thresher and Scorpion that told me how to find the Titanic. So were you confident, though, that that was enough time? No. <laughs> and yet, yet, you beat we, the odds. We were down to the very, well, we have the exhibit now at National Geographic mm -hmm. that tells that, not only the story, but then I had to go back a second time. And that was the real scary time, because now, were they going to follow me? Because we had to go back mm -hmm. to not only the Titanic, but to then go inside the Scorpion. Right. And so were you followed? We did our job. You did your job? Yes. You can talk about this now. Some of it, yes. Some of it. Why? Because you've done a number of other missions, what, some 30-odd. You can't talk <clears> about any of those? Well, I can talk about finding the Bismarck. I can talk about a lot of other things, but I can't. Not the details. I cannot talk about my other Navy missions, no. They have but, yet to be declassified. But so why has this one been declassified? Ask the Navy. Ask Because the they didn't tell me, and when the phone started ringing, National Geographic called and said, Bob, you didn't tell us this. <laughs> so that's why we're doing the exhibit, because they were fessing up. So you're fessing up now. I found it really interesting, your reaction to finding the Titanic, because you wanted to find this, and that's a moment of elation. This is what you've been searching for. But your mood quickly changed. Yes, when we found the Titanic, we naturally were very excited. It was a, it was a tough job. We got it at the, scoring the winning gold at the buzzer. And, but then someone looked up at the clock and said, she sinks in 20 minutes. Because it was, it was 2 in the morning, she sank at 2.20. Mm -hmm. And we, we felt embarrassed. And it was like a wall switch that uh, we just were hit by it. You know, I, I was not emotionally attached to the Titanic until I found it. And it spoke. And it's very powerful. And then we made a promise that we would never, ever take anything from the site, which we never did. Which you haven't. How do you feel about the fact that things have been taken, that there is still such <clears throat> interest here? Well, there's a presently in court on where these artifacts that were taken by the salvagers, we're hoping they go home. Mm -hmm. back to the UK where they belong. But the judge will decide that in Norfolk in the next few days, actually. So stay tuned. We will stay tuned for that. Um, when you think back on everything that happened for you when you were able to find these, well, to, to get to these submarines, as you point out, you knew where they were, um, and all the other stuff that you can't talk to us about, but someday we're waiting for the phone train. You'll call us and let us know. It's interesting, too, as we're watching this, as, as all of this is playing out, when we're at a distinctly different time than we were even just a few years ago when it comes to U.S. relations with Russia. Correct. And it's sort of remarkable to learn about some of these things as we're watching all that play out. How much of that goes through your mind? Well, the Cold War, we were busy. And uh, in fact, the casualties uh, were some of our submarines, particularly the Thresher. Uh, so, yes, uh, it's, it's a Cold War that has now started again. Mm -hmm. I thought it was over, but we're back. Do you think that will keep us from uh, being able to talk to you about some of your work? Probably. Yeah. What would you like to see? What, what would you like to be written about the Titanic? Because people are still so fascinated by it. Well, it, it, you know, it was amazing how, to this day, people's fascination, it, it just, 
it was touches everyone's button. I mean, whether you're, it's the Edwardian era, mm -hmm. the, the, the stars of the time were the wealthy, the Astors, the Strausses that were on the Titanic. It was the largest moving object of the time on, in the world. Uh, it was so straight out of Hollywood. I mean, just Jim Cameron, who's a good friend, obviously. He was the first one to come to my office after I found the Titanic. He says, the, you know, I want to do a movie about this. And, and so the point is, is that it just affects everybody. Every generation, as we're doing right now, with our exhibit at National Geographic, rediscovers the Titanic. It's such an amazing story where there were villains and there were heroes and, and all of the above, and it'll never, ever go away. It is fascinating, and your part of this story sort of just has renewed my own fascination as well. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. We look forward to learning more about this secret mission.